So today I'm going to show you uh, the min warping technique. This is a really handy way to get additional shapes out of basic primitives or even from slightly processed uh, nodes. So the min blend mode basically takes whatever is the lesser of the two at any given pixel position. And it is available in the combined node and more readily available right here in the post process stack. So let me illustrate what it does. First, we have a range primitive. I'm just going to create a Perlin. And uh, I'm going to auto level both of them just so we can see on the effect more clearly. I'll combine these two, which creates the combined node, and then change this to min mode and 100%. So in this, it is taking whatever is lower of the two. I can clamp this down so we can see it uh, um, as it would be without auto leveling. Uh, and I just auto levels because uh, auto level both because range and Berlin have different height ranges and so they wouldn't work. But that's neither here nor there. So here you can see we're combining these two to create a kind of a collapse. And that can be taken one step further. So let me illustrate. I'll delete these two. Let's go back to the uh, range and undo the auto level. Uh, I'll increase the definition and height so that we get a robust shape. That looks cool. Next, I'm going to add a warp node. So warp basically displaces the, the terrain. So there, that's what it's doing. It's uh, using uh, one of the noises that we choose here. So in this case, it's Berlin FBM. And it has a somewhat high roughness. I think we can make this maximum roughness just to see. And so you can see it takes our shape, twists it, warps it, as the name suggests, and uh, uh, it makes it do um, things in the flavor of the noise that you've selected. Now I can change this to war noise, and it becomes slightly more angular and more uh, uh, like cell-based, like a war noise would be. So. Now that we have this warping going on, terrain looks cool, but we can make this look better by just going down to the post process stack and turning on the min blend mode. And so now you can see it's choosing whatever is lower of the two noises, the range and the warp. Uh, in the post process stack, it'll immediately choose whatever is before. If you want more detailed control, then you would use a combined node like we did before. So that you can see is already giving us certain shapes that are better than just the range and uh, uh, better than what the, the warp was giving us without the uh, without the min. So we kind of get the best of both worlds. And so you can also change the seed to get different options. You can change the size. And once you have this, you can then erode this And let me change a few settings so we get sharper channels. There you go. Now, we can do this again. So if I were to just duplicate this node, and then we'll change the seed just so we don't end up with the same shapes again. And so in min mode, you can see it's affecting the eroded part again, and we're getting uh, new shapes based on that. We can change other settings to make this fit an idea better. Like if we want this to be a, a lot rougher, then this works. Uh, let's change the seed again just to see what options we get. And you can keep experimenting. Uh, you can reduce the roughness sometimes to if it looks too noisy. Uh, so I think this, uh, I'll go back to more rough uh, look. Okay. This kind of looks cool. It's not as realistic as the previous one, but that's fine. This is just one more process. So you can erode this again. And again, I'll take out the inhibition so we can get some decent down cutting and increase the duration. And so there you can get like an even better shape. Now, um, here's another example. So this is simpler. Uh, so we just have a range like we did before and we erode it first so we get this then we warp it 
and you can see uh, you're getting some decent collapses in these smooth shapes here and that's because our size is larger than we, what we had uh, in the other uh, example and the strength is maximum which is uh, uh, something that requires a bit more delicate uh, approach like so for example like the roughness I left it lower if this was too rough the strength would overwhelm it um, same for the size if it's too small the noise becomes too noisy so here with with this specific set and the min blend mode of course we are getting um, certain warpiness out here at the same time we get a few collapses and we get to retain um, things on these slopes then we can erode it one more time but this time on the erosion node, I'm also using the min blend mode. So if the erosion goes um, further than the original warping, we will get that. But if it creates an accumulation, like it would here, we would retain the original warp area. So if I undo this, you can see this is where a lot of the soil from the surrounding mountains would accumulate. And if we use a uh, min mode, we get this. And so we kind of get the uh, the nice wavy lines from the um, uh, from the previous warp pass. So this trick can be applied in many different ways. You can apply it to just about any node because the the uh, min mode is available here. There's also the max mode, which um, if I go to the warp and instead of min, if we do max, we get the opposite. We get the taller portion from either map, and so that gives us these shapes. And then if if we go and erode that. But keep that in min, you can see we are getting these shapes with this little, almost like a talus line. Um, there's a little valley being created. And then this, you can also switch to max mode, although the effect won't be that cool because erosion doesn't work with, work well with max mode because erosion is all about taking material away. So that min mode is better. But again, you can experiment. You can create lots of different uh, 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 processes using just standard nodes and just using min to kind of get collapses and other shapes inside.